I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty irritated with the lack of Pixel tablet accessories. Personally, I just like to complement my devices with cases and add-ons to really make it feel like my own, and even though there are very few to choose from, I still wanted to make this video showcasing my top five Pixel tablet accessories, at least the ones I've been using so far anyways, to give you some ideas and spread awareness of the options out there. So let's not waste any time at all and get right into it. I wanted to start this video off with the question I get asked the most as of late, and that's what keyboard I'm using for for the Pixel tablet. Every video I make for the channel, I always see questions asking about it and I just wanted to solve this once and for all for those of you who are curious. This is a compact wireless Bluetooth keyboard I got from Amazon and it's made by a company called Ubody. I believe I'm pronouncing that right and if not, I apologize. Sometimes it's just hard to tell. Functionally, I picked this up to test what the experience was like using the Pixel tablet with a keyboard, almost like a mini computer. And I have to say on that front, I'm pretty satisfied. It's not a mechanical keyboard or anything crazy like that, but I find the typing feedback to feel pretty great. All the function keys actually work with the Android operating system and do what you expect them to do. On the Pixel tablet, I was able to take a screenshot, alt tab to my next window, use music controls like pause, play, forward, volume down, up, etc. For the most part, not bad for a cheap little keyboard. Of course, I'm not gonna lie, I primarily got it for the aesthetics and if you know me, then you know I love different quirky little accessories and the button accents plus the retro typewriter vibe fit that idea perfectly. None of these accessories are sponsored, by the way, but the link will be in the description for anyone that wants to check it out. Now, the next three accessories that I'll be talking about are all cases, starting with the official first-party Google case for the Pixel tablet. I'm sure you've seen the reviews by now, but just to get you caught up, the price starts at a kind of expensive 79 bucks. It's made out of silicone exactly like the Pixel 7a cases and has a slight matte feel with a little felt on the inside for some extra protection. Overall, it feels like a pretty nice case, but the real reason you'd spend $79 on this is for what Google calls the infinite hinge. With the infinite hinge, you're able to position the device at almost any angle within 180 degrees, and I do find it to be really convenient compared to other kickstand accessories I've used in the past with other devices. When you put the tablet down, you can just pop open that kickstand, and at any angle, it firmly stays in position. My favorite part is closing it up because the kickstand snaps tightly into place, and I also love how the ring on the back allows for a clean transfer to the hub. You can kind of use the ring as a guideline for placement and it's just satisfying. One negative I have noticed so far is durability and not as a whole, but I have to take the case off now and then to try on new accessories or take photos of the tablet for the website. When putting the case back on, the rubber got pinched between the tablet and the case itself, which caused a tear in the lower left corner. From my perspective, this is totally my fault, but I still thought you guys should know what happened just so that you can decide for yourself if the risk is worth it. The next case I wanna talk about is the Mag Folio case by Spec. Personally, I find this one to be the most interesting of the bunch, and to me, it was designed for the ultra minimalist that want something sleek and aren't too concerned about protection. I say that because the mag folio doesn't have an actual case portion to wrap around the tablet. What you get is a little felt slab with magnets that attach pretty firmly to the Pixel tablet itself, and you're expected to close it up when not in use or use the various notches inside to act as a way to prop the tablet up. Thankfully, you get multiple angles here, and I find them to be serviceable for most needs. As for the design as a whole, the outside is made out of this plastic vinyl-like material that does have a bit of texture to it. You get a little loop for a stylus, a flap that covers the camera when not in use, and a little magnetic latch to help keep the tablet secure when closed. I find the magnets that hold the tablet in to be okay. It takes a pretty decent amount of intentional force to remove it, but let's say you drop the tablet and you grab the folio part in a last ditch effort, that's probably gonna be enough force to dislodge the tablet, so that's why I say this is for those not too concerned about protection. Me, I'm way too clumsy for my own good, and within the first five minutes, I dinged my tablet against a door frame, and that's how I got this little scratch here. So yeah, if you have kids or you're not very attentive like me, this case is absolutely not for you. I would also say the same if you intend on using the dock a lot too. Thankfully, with the magnets, you can easily remove the tablet and just set it on the dock, but me personally, I want the case itself to actually attach to the dock without having to actually remove the tablet, but that's just me. The last case I wanted to show off is the Spec Standy Shell case. I find the name pretty quippy and just overall a pretty nice case too. This case probably provides the most protection out of the three options with this tablet. On the inside, we have this felt material and a hard plastic lining around the frame of the case. On the outside, we have a smooth matte finish like plastic with some rubber accents on the corners. Something cool is we get a kickstand. This is not the hyper 
flexible kickstand like the first party Pixel tablet case, but still gets the job done. Spec uses a latch release mechanism. So when you do want to use the kickstand, just flip that switch and lock it into place. Durability wise, the case has held up fine so far. I am worried how long that latch is going to last. Not to mention, I've seen some of my tech peers on Twitter notating the black version does get smudgy and scratched up pretty easily. On the pink version, I haven't seen any damage like this so far, but I do notice there is a little outline where the hub meets the case, which is just something you should keep in mind. The last accessory that I want to talk about is a USI 2.0 stylus by Maxi. This one's from Amazon. It costs 35 bucks and is a simple, inexpensive stylus for those that don't want to break the bank and don't want to take advantage of the USI 2.0 capabilities. It's made out of plastic, powered by quadruple A batteries, and has one singular button for apps that support the function. I made an entire video review on the Pixel tablet and what you can do with the stylus. I'll have it linked somewhere around here, but if you want to check it out, it'll give you a deep dive into what you can do. On a surface level perspective, this stylus is cheap and gets the job done. If you do have extra money, I would recommend a Panoval stylus though. I just know they've been in the game for so long and it's probably going to be a better experience, but if price is your concern, the Maxi Stylus will do just fine. And that's my top five accessories that I wanted to show you guys today, and I do have some quick honorable mentions that I'd want to know about if I were you. One of those is an adjustable stand by Wasterstein. I personally don't have this yet, but we'll probably get one of these eventually anyway. It's just a little stand for the Pixel Tablet Hub. It appears the stand will allow you to tilt the entire hub like you would a monitor, and I can see this useful for those of you that use the Pixel Tablet in an office setting or as a desk companion. My second honorable mention goes to this generic clear case on Amazon. I also don't have one of these yet, but I only bring it up because there's literally no other Pixel tablet cases I know of at this time. So buy it at your own risk or wait for the reviews to come in just in case. Either way though, this has been my top five Pixel tablet accessories. Like I said, I know there aren't a ton of options out there, so I hope this video helped give you some ideas just what might work best for you. With that said, guys, I am getting out of here so I can get working on the next video. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.